Hello, my name is Steve Goldberg, and I'm going to show you how students can bring current events to life and gain additional context about the world in which they live using Google Earth. So here's Google Earth, and what we're going to do today is look at the topic of Iraq rebuilding. And if you have really good eyesight, you can see that I read a piece on NPR, which referenced a longer article in National Geographic, and both of those pieces mentioned certain places within Iraq. Um, and this is the link to the NPR article, and this is the link to the National Geographic article. And I'll go ahead and pull up the uh, NPR article. It's got sort of a compelling title, What's with the Hot Pink in Baghdad? And an Iraq War veteran and award-winning poet named Brian Turner recently returned to Baghdad. And he wrote a piece in the National Geographic but what grabbed my attention first, if we scroll down here, um, photographer Lindsay Adario also went, and she captured some sites of renewal and growth. And I think that's the theme, um, thinking about how Iraq is rebuilding itself after the, uh, the war is sort of wrapping itself up. So this question here I thought was really interesting. It said, are there any experiences from this trip that made a lasting impression on you? And I'm going to actually highlight some stuff in here. Here's her answer. I think the overall feeling of hope returning to Iraqis, that they can start to live their lives again. There are weddings everywhere. People are out and about, and people are tired of compromising their lives for violence. It was absolutely incredible for me to see people swimming at Lake, Lake Habaniya in the middle of the Sunni Triangle, a place that was full of insurgents for years and is now full of families swimming, jet skiing, laughing. That was particularly memorable. So if you're a typical student, or even a typical teacher, I think, you don't know where Lake Habaniya is. But it's pretty easy to find where that is using Google Earth. And so these are, if you go to Wikipedia and look up Lake Habaniya, these are the coordinates right here. And so if you plug those coordinates in to Google Earth, close this up for a second, and we'll zoom in to, uh, to Lake Habania. There's the capital Baghdad over there. And there's Lake Habania. And we could turn the photos on. And it's not the world's, that's the city of Habania, but there you get an idea. It looks like there's a resort on the edge of it, and you get some sense of what the Habania Lake looks like. And now people are finally swimming again there. So she also mentioned the Sunni Triangle, and we'll get to that in a moment. Well, I can do it now. This is, if we zoom out a bit, the Sunni Triangle. And it connects these cities here. I'll sort of zoom in a little bit. And turn off the photos layer. A lot with Google Earth. Tikrit, Ramadi, and Baghdad form the corners of the Sunni Triangle. And so this is an area where there had been a great deal of violence. And there, as you can see, if I turn off the Sunni Triangle, is Lake Habania right there. So she's saying this area that was incredibly violent is now a place where people can swim um, and play. And she, after reporting this story, she went um, from South Sudan to Iraq to Afghanistan to Bahrain to Libya. She's um, covering the news, which is a pretty dangerous thing to do. And it says here that in Libya, she was kidnapped along with three other New York Times reporters in March. Um, but she's now safe and headed to Afghanistan. So you might want to learn some about Lindsay Adario if you are interested in being a reporter. So we looked up Lake Habania, and then I linked to the National Geographic article, and I'll show you how I did that up here. It talked about, this is where we started with NPR, what's with the hot pink in Baghdad. Um, this is the link to the July issue of National Geographic. Um, and we can go ahead, if you click on that, you get this, National Geographic. 
and there's a picture of Baghdad, and there's his article called Baghdad After the Storm. Same theme, um, Iraq doing some, some rebuilding. So let me show you some stuff I thought was interesting. Um, and I think it makes sense just to read this for a minute. Um, this is what it was when he had gone as a soldier. Um, back then, my unit escorted long serpentine supply convoys through the city. Insurgents staged complex ambushes, driving cars loaded down with explosives. The black scorch marks of vehicles burned to the ground, remain long after their hulks were removed, giving me pause whenever we passed them by. So what I'm doing now, this would be a good thing to have sixth graders, for instance, do, is just practice reading and discussing little bits of this and then using Google Earth to bring it more to life. So they're getting a sense of um, what it's like to be in a war zone. And then one day, our squad leader yelled at my machine gunner and me to drop down from our positions in the hatches at the rear of our striker vehicle and mortar rounds suddenly burst in the air, raining down a deadly spray of shrapnel. We rode through the storm of metal, hearts pounding in our chests. Memories like these reenact themselves in my mind now as we drive through the city. And for a moment, I imagine I've returned to a Baghdad the way a ghost might haunt the world it once inhabited. And if there was student interest, this could turn into a discussion about post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but our theme right now is rebuilding, so things have changed. And this isn't the Baghdad he once knew. Just off Abu Nuwas Street near the Tigris River, where sniper fire was once a daily hazard, the sounds of war have been replaced by the sounds of children playing soccer on the grass. They whoop, high-pitched, and full-throated like birds calling to each other. So where's Abu Nuwas Street? Well, I typed it into Google Earth, and I'm not sure if this is exactly where he's referring to, but as we zoom into Baghdad here, I think this is right. It's near the Tigris River, which we saw on the edge here, um, and we can zoom out a little bit get some context on Baghdad. So I think it's this street here, and now there are kids playing soccer um, on the edge. And what I put on this place mark, and what you do is you'd have students fill in information from the place marks. It's not cooperating. There we go. I'm not sure if this is the place he's referring to, but if you click on the pictures near the place mark, you'll see grass and palm trees. That looks pretty nice. And you can sort of envision people playing soccer at a place like that. That could be Florida. So that's Abu Nuwa Street. I'm going to turn the photos off for a second here. And then uh, getting back to his article here, he also talks about Haifa Street, where bitter sectarian fighting raged, but now you can hear young men um, listening to Iraqi pop music. So when you type in Haifa Street into Google Earth, this is what you get. And uh, actually, I'll try it, see if this works here. Just up here, Haifa, yeah, there it is. Haifa Street, Baghdad, Iraq. When you type that in, it takes you not to one street, but to places that have Haifa Street in the address. And so what I figured is, okay, these places are all on Haifa Street. This must be Haifa Street. So you have to do a little detective work, but when you have students do this, rather than just telling them, here's where Haifa Street is, they come to own it a little more. So that was the screen capture I had. You can see it relative to Abu Nuwas Street over here. And so we're on the other side of the Tigris River. And if we connect the dots, that's where Haifa Street is. I wanted to be sure though. So I looked up Haifa Street just using Google Earth. And there's Haifa Street. So it looks like I'm in the right spot. And now I'm wondering, and this will happen as you do this. Um, what's this green zone thing? Now, I happen to know what the green zone is. And one of the benefits that students see once they keep track of the news using Google Earth is I was able to go in and pull up a prior um, thing I put together. This is the sort of the center of the green zone. And I know from previous research that the circular white monument right here to the left is a tomb to the unknown soldiers of Iraq. And if you want to, you could click that link and get more information about that. But this is kind of cool. You can put in a green zone using the uh, add polygon feature of um, Google Earth. And that's where I also was able to do the um, SUNY triangle. So the, the, the green zone, just to answer that question, is where the United States 
was bunkered in. And if, if folks were flying in, that was the one sort of safe area and outside of there was more dangerous. And I'm sure if we went on to read more of the article, he would talk some um, about the green zone. But this is the Sunni Triangle, which looked kind of cool when I showed it to you before. But now you can see how I made that. And this sort of pulls us into the right height so that Tikrit should show up. Yeah, there we go. And at different heights, you see different cities. But Tikrit, Ramadi, and Baghdad are the corners. Um, and I made that polygon by doing this. And then you can change it to different colors. So that's bringing Baghdad to life. And I think I had one more thing down here. We've had the green zone. Oh, yeah. So near the university is the next part of his article. Several young women laugh as they cradle textbooks and notebooks. Um, so what you do is you model this for students and then you task them with finding the university. Right. They should be able to do that. Once you model it for them, um, they learn to do this on their own and to find to be able to take an article, bring it to life. And um, that's this is the power of the tool of Google Earth. And all that is a tiny little file um, that I could save it, email it. Um, and this here can be shared with all sorts of people. So thanks for listening. And oh, just one last picture here, just to make sure I knew where the Sunni Triangle was. I looked that up and I tried roughly to copy that. So um, it's using all sorts of resources that are online to uh to bring the news to life thanks for watching